Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to learn how to harvest roots for medicine. So it's a beautiful autumn day here in southern Ontario and I'm preparing to harvest the roots that I need for tincture this year. And I wanted to touch base on um, some differing opinions that you're going to hear from herbalists about when to harvest your roots. And this goes back to what I have said before and will continue to say is that if you ask a thousand herbalists how to do something you're going to get a thousand and one answers. I was taught and still continue to believe that the best time to harvest roots is in the fall. During the fall months is when, um, when plants that are perennials are sending their energy back down into root structures. They're no longer producing leaves, they're not producing flowers, instead they're preparing for a season of dormancy. And so to me, um, you know, this is the time when the root has most of its medicine and has most of its beneficial properties. In the spring, roots are, or plants in general, are working hard to produce leaves, and flowering shoots and buds and all these types of things sending their energy upwards into the aerial parts of the plant and I was taught by my teacher that during this time the roots don't have the same medicinal properties. Now lots of herbalists love to harvest their roots in the spring. I say do what works for you. I love harvesting my roots in the fall and have made medicines this way for many years and will continue to do so. So I'm going to show you some of the plants that I'm going to be harvesting today and then how we go about harvesting them in general. So one of the first plants that I'm going to harvest is Althea officinalis, otherwise known as marshmallow. And I love working with marshmallow root for a few reasons. One, it is a really, really great herb for the respiratory system. Uh, specifically, it's what we call a relaxing expectorant. So if you ever have that uncontrollable spasmodic type cough, really dry coughs that aren't producing a lot, marshmallow root is a great ally for you because it has um, it's really high in chemical constituents that lend to something called demulcency which is a fancy way of saying it's slimy and I know that sounds really gross but if you've got a sore throat or you have one of those dry spasmodic coughs it's not really producing a lot of mucus you want herbs that are going to help support and soothe those tissues it's also a decent little immune uh, stimulant as well so in terms of harvesting marshmallow root, I'll get my husband to take a look at the plant here. Lots of plants will actually leave behind a stalk, making it really identifiable. Um, and so you don't have to worry about getting to it before all the plant parts die back. A great example of that would be dandelion. It's really, really hard to find dandelion roots once um, all the leaves have died back. You're left with nothing, right? Whereas marshmallow is going to leave this really great identifiable stalk. You want plants that are at least three years old. These ones are three years old here. And keep in mind that when you're harvesting roots, you are killing the plant. There's really no way around this. Um, so a lot of herbalists, including my, my former teacher and myself, are looking at using the aerial parts as plant, um, of plants that we traditionally use the root to see if we can get similar medicinal benefits. Echinacea is a really great example of this in our area. It is uh, borderline on the endangered list. I know it's on the watch list for sure. Um, and because of that, we don't want to be digging up a bunch of echinacea plants, right? Because it does kill the plant, whereas the aerial parts actually have very similar properties. So to harvest your roots, you really just need shovel <laughs> and some elbow grease. So we're going to take a look at the base of this marshmallow root. It's a really large plant. Like I mentioned, this one's about three years old. And you want to make sure that you're not digging too close to the root structure. If you do this, you could damage it. So you want to kind of give yourself a nice wide berth and dig in with your shovel and gently start lifting up the soil. And you want to work your way around the entire plant. You can see already I've started to kind of lift it, right? The one thing we really want to avoid is slicing that root or not getting the entire root structure from your plant because again, I am essentially killing this plant. And so, you know, I don't want to waste plant material because um, I've accidentally severed 
the root structure of this and now I have to harvest two or three of them to make up for what I don't have. So I'm going to get to digging this plant out and I'll show you once we get closer to the point where I'm actually going to pull the plant up what it looks like. Uh, but like I said, you need a shovel, a little bit of elbow grease and make sure that you give yourself a nice wide perimeter around the plant uh, ensuring that you can get the entire root structure. So here we have the root structure of my about three-year-old marshmallow plant. And as you can see, the marshmallow plant produces quite a fibrous root structure. And it's actually sent out, let's see if I can get my husband to come down a little closer. It has sent out a large portion of its root out underneath the border of our garden and probably well into the lawn. And um, so knowing what the root structure of your plant looks like is going to help you with harvesting as well. You know, if you're harvesting things like um, burdock or dandelion, it's going to have more of a tap root structure and you're probably going to have to dig down a lot deeper. Whereas something like marshmallow, as you can see, has a really fibrous kind of root structure. So most of my work is going to come in removing the dirt and making sure that I get all of this out, very carefully expose all these roots before I bring them in the house to process them for medicines. So I'm gonna to get to that right now. Um, like I said, this is probably the biggest part of my job is getting rid of all this dirt because you really don't want all that going down the drain. So we're gonna do this and then when I move on to harvest my next roots, I can show you the differences between this one and those. So the next plant I want to harvest is Elecampane. So Elecampane is the common name for this plant. The Latin name is Inula Hellenium and uh, as you can see, it's, it's quite a large plant. And what I love about Inula is it actually does have some really great properties in terms of using the aerial parts as well. So this is the flowering stock that Inula is gonna leave behind. And if you plan on harvesting roots for medicine, it is a good idea to stake out your locations earlier in the season so you can really ensure that you're positively identifying your plant. Um, like I said, this one leaves behind a fairly recognizable stock, plus it's on my property, so I do know why I planted it. So in terms of harvesting it for medicine, one of the main reasons, I mean, what doesn't this plant do? And, and when this is in flower next year, I'll make sure I do a video on it because it helps to support the digestive system being a really great bitter and um, a carminative. So it's gonna help with all those functional digestive things like gas and digestion and bloating, but it's also gonna help support the liver um, through its bitter properties. It's also a good cholagogue, another um, meaning that it helps to increase bile production. It's fantastic for the immune system. It's another really good herb that helps with fevers, boosting the immune system, but it's also another really amazing respiratory herb. So as you can see, there would be a lot of reasons in clinic why I would use this. So this is, a, again, a larger plant. You're going to want to do the same thing you kind of did with the marshmallow, is do your best to, you know, work as wide a berth as possible. <laughs> and so I'll probably start like right in here. You can see this is where the vast majority of the root structure is. Now this is three different plants that have all kind of amalgamated together. So I'm gonna focus on the center portion here and hope that I get a decent enough amount of root. And I'm gonna get to work and then I'll show you what the root structure looks like when I'm done. So you can see the difference between Inula and Althea, the marshmallow root. So while my husband is doing some digging for me, I forgot to mention in the previous segment that when you're looking for your inula root or your inula plants, you want to make sure that you've got three to four year old plants, just like the marshmallow root. And one of the best ways to tell is the number of flowering stalks that your plant has. So you want to make sure it has at least two or three. So this one actually has four or five flowering stalks. I also know when I planted it, so that helps. But if you're looking at an inula in the wild, and it only has one flowering stalk, chances are it's a pretty new plant, which means that its root structure is going to be quite small, meaning that you'll have to dig up more of it, right? So the older plants like these ones, there's another one of its flowering stalks. The older plants like these ones will have a much larger substantial root structure, which my husband is finding out the hard way. It's yeah. proving to be pretty difficult to dig up. So as you can see, I have my marshmallow root. This was the first plant that we harvested. And we've cleaned a lot of the dirt off, but the most labor intensive part about making tinctures from roots or drying roots for teas is getting the darn things clean. So we're gonna use the rain barrel to wash as much of this dirt off as possible before bringing it into the house. But this is the root structure of the marshmallow root. It's pretty neat looking. 
would actually make a pretty decent Halloween uh, prop. <laughs> <laughs> and then here, you can see I have my inula root, which forms much larger tap roots. And I harvested quite a bit and we actually replanted a whole bunch, hoping it'll come back next year. Our, my medicine garden is actually over top of an old driveway. And so because of that, the plants have had to adapt. We put a ton of soil on top, but they can only go down so far before they have to start branching out. And we accidentally took too much of the inula up and replanted it. Hopefully she'll come back next year. So I'm going to show you a few other plants that people traditionally like to harvest for medicine and explain how to harvest those for you as well. So here we have a beautiful burdock root specimen. So this is Arctium lapa. Now I'm not going to be harvesting it today because I actually have one and a half liters of tincture in clinic still, so I don't need to disturb this beautiful plant. But folks often like to harvest burdock for medicine, so I thought it would be wise for me to explain how. Burdock is a biennial. So I want you to remember that when you're looking for the plant in the wild because once it has produced fruit, which are those burrs, you know, those little velcro-y things that stick all over your clothes and get in your hair and kind of annoy you, that means that burdock is in its second year if it has produced burrs, if it has produced fruit. And you don't want the plant in its second year, you want it in its first year when it produces these really big basil leaves that are sort of reminiscent of rhubarb. This is when you would want to harvest your burdock for making medicine. And again, this is more of like a tap root, so you don't have to go out too, too far. Just dig down nice and deep and you'll be able to dig out the plant this way. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Sorry, a chickadee just flew right by as soon as we started filming. They're loving the sunflower seeds. All of our sunflowers are dropping their seeds and we have hundreds of chickadees here foraging. But I digress. So this is another really great plant that people like to harvest this time of year for making medicines and this is horseradish. And I will be harvesting this a little later today um, and of course making a video on how to make fire cider. That one's gonna come up. So the thing with horseradish is this baby is super invasive, so you don't have to take as much care in harvesting it. I know a lot of friends who've actually tried to eradicate the horseradish on their property and thought they dug up all the roots and lo and behold, next year it comes back. So again, produces kind of a nice big tap root and you can take as much of it as you want because chances are she's gonna come back anyway. So this is horseradish. In terms of making medicine, most people tend to use it to make something called fire cider. And as I hinted, I will be doing a video on fire cider really, really soon. So last and certainly not least uh, would be dandelion root. And uh, like I mentioned before, you don't want to wait too long to harvest this one because once these leaves die back, you're going to have absolutely no way to know where your dandelion is. So you want to get them when you still have some foliage, when you still have some green, so you know where they are. Dandelion actually produces a fairly significant tap root. This little tiny plant actually has a pretty large root, so chances are you're only going to need to pull up three or four of them to be able to make your medicines. Dandelion, I don't have enough time in these videos to go over all of the plant profiles, so I definitely encourage you to check out my other videos um, where I've talked about the medicinal properties of specific plants, but lots of people like to use dandelion root as a coffee substitute, uh, but of course it's a fantastic detoxifying herb as well helping support the liver, the urinary tract system, and all kinds of things. I also have lots of dandelion root tinct uh, tincture in clinic, so I won't be harvesting it today, but I wanted to show you that yes, indeed, you are just looking for dandelion leaves and then you harvest the tap root from there. So thank you so very much for watching this video on how to harvest roots for medicine. I will be filming part two tomorrow on how to process the roots to make tinctures, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, I will see you on the next video. Thank you.